Hey guys, Jay for Auto Performance. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about the C4 forward drum a little bit. Again, you know, this is another reason I tell you this is this is the hardest transmission to build, I think. So here's the deal: you've got I've welded them up, but there's three. Uh, they call them jelly bean holes. They're basically just voids. This is where your input shaft spines into. And it has these voids here that the factory put, I don't know, to save a few cents per drum or something. So, what happens is it cracks in these thin areas around where the input shaft goes. If it's something making power or something that has a trans break or something of that nature. Okay, so what you got to do, weld these up. Um, I've tried different methods. My favorite is the MIG welder. I've seen guys uh, furnace braze these in or, you know, or braze them in, uh, fill them with brass. That doesn't seem to work very well. It's just too soft and heating this up really you know red and orange color and melting this in it just really just stresses the drum out you know it's just a lot of heat on it yeah I understand that the MIG welder is doing that too but what happens with the MIG welder is you get this kind of rapid cooling effect on it and it tends to kind of naturally heat treat the metal back a little bit where the you know the brazing just seems to really just you know it cools slow and it, you know you're heating it a long period of time and it cools slow and just kind of anneals the metal that much more uh, again I realize the MIG welder is doing this but not as bad so and I have tried TIG welder on this too uh, kind of same thing, you know, you're just really putting a lot of heat into it. It takes a long time. The MIG, you can get in and out of there very quickly and get some of your heat treat back into it naturally. So, I like the MIG welder, and that's basically what you're left with. So, then what you got to do, this has to be machined down, and if you look on the other side, there's a lube hole in here that got covered up, so this is going to need to be re-drilled. Alright, so here's the finished product. Uh, welds have been machined down. The hole's been drilled uh, through it again. But another issue, when you put your thrust washer back on, it covers the hole. So, And you can see the washer has these three holes here. Because that they did that so you know you it didn't matter which way you put it on, but when this was all open, the oil would find its way to this hole. Okay, so now what I've done, and, and you could drill the hole in a new place, I suppose, to match one of those holes. But what I like to do is just machine a groove here so the oil can go around and actually come out any of these three holes um, that's the way I do it other ways of doing it like I showed you are just fine uh, but that's my preference okay so this is a lot of work and then you gotta clean it up and you know you gotta have a MIG welder you gotta have a lathe and a lot of transmission builders don't have that so you have to have somebody do this for you uh, you know which is certainly doable I used to sell a lot of these drums done man I've sold hundreds of them done to shops and individuals and things but you just can't get these drums anymore uh, another thing I want to show you and I forgot about this hang on one second let me grab a couple things Okay, um, I've just got this, I, because I've only got one hand here, but I just put a rod in the vise, and I just have this hanging uh, through the hole in the center. It's just hanging there, nothing special. 
So I want you to hear this. I'm going to hit it with a hammer. And you hear that? It sounds like a bell. And some of them don't. They're just a dull thud when you hit them. They don't have this... They don't have that ring to them. Okay? And what that means is... It's... I don't know exactly. I'm, I'm not an expert on metallurgy, but... Some of the castings, and they're generally the C5 drums. And I don't like those, by the way, but... The C5 one, generally, it doesn't ring like that. It's just, it's a dull thud when you hit it. And when you do this test, you know, no piston in it. It's got to be empty and just hanging like this, okay? Uh, so be aware of that. If you, if you do that with the piston in it, or it assembled at all, it's still going to just sound like a, you know, it's just going to be a dull thud when you hit it. So you want that nice ring. That's the drum you want. It, um... It's stronger, and it's going to weld better. Uh, the one that, you know, just has a dull thud, you only want to use that for, you know, mild applications, you know, 400 hoss or less, and you can weld it if you want, no, not bother, but at that power level. Uh, so anyways, that's important. Uh, this is another thing, and... Uh, today is, I think it is March 26, 2024. Uh, this piston here, I make this. This is my design uh, because I've, you know, like I keep telling you, this is a small unit. It needs a lot of pressure. And what happens is the disc spring will get uh, overturned and bent if you're running high pressure and, and especially if it's fixed pressure. So this is something that's important. I've uh, been out of stock on these a lot, but I'm letting you guys know uh, again. Today's you know it's March of 24, and I've got material coming. I'm gonna be making some of these. So a lot of people have been asking and wondering when these are gonna be back in stock. So I'm working on that. Hopefully in the next oh I don't know week or two. Let's say two weeks. I'm going to have some for sale again, so I uh, apologize for that. I'm just having trouble keeping up with all this stuff, and these are time-consuming to make. Uh, but they're important if you're running high pressure and fixed pressure. Okay, uh, last thing I'm going to talk about on this drum is the number of clutches. And... Five were, you know, most of them held five from the factory, and that honestly works pretty well. But I generally do six on high power applications. I've had some customers say they've put seven in here, but you can't. And I'm going to show you why. So here's your... This is the set of splines that engage on those teeth on the forward clutch, and... You know, if you look, you can see the indentations. This was just a five clutch deal. You can see the splines. You, you, you run out of spline. It's very difficult to get six in here. And you have to do it. You have to use the thin steels, which is okay because it's just a static. You have to use the thin frictions. Uh, again, that's okay. It's static. So we don't care about that, but... You've got very little spline here. You just barely make it with six. So you can't cut the top pressure plate like people normally do. You gotta drop the bottom pressure plate. And I used to sell a kit for this. That's been out of stock forever too. Problem is getting pressure plates to modify. I keep thinking about making new pressure plates for this unit, but I, you know, man, I don't know. I'm afraid to invest a ton of money into this unit. I just don't know what its future is. You know, it's getting so hard to find the cores, and then when you get to the point where you got to buy everything brand new like a power glide, I don't know that anybody wants to spend six, eight grand on a C4. You know, and when these cores are gone, they're gone, and there's just not that many left. So I don't know, you know, if you would put in the comments if you think I should make new pressure plates for these. 
I don't know how many of these are still floating around. I still build them, but I don't build a ton of them. Everybody's kind of going overdrive, and uh, oddly enough, everybody wants a C6. It's kind of crazy, but they're building big, giant motors, so C6 is a good option for that and relatively inexpensive. So, um, so if you're gonna, you know, if you want to put that sixth friction in there, you know, you got to do thin steels, thin frictions. You've got to drop the bottom pressure plate. Uh, bear in mind where you're positioning on the splines. I'm not going to sit here and give you all the exact dimensions and make it too easy for you. I want you to struggle a little bit. And uh, I guess I'm just going to give you some tough love there. But you'll figure it out if you've got, you know, again, you want to build C4s, shops, you're listening, get a, get a lathe, you know. You got to have a lathe and you got to study this unit. It's got a lot of design changes and I'm going to go over some of that. Uh, like I just showed you on that on that ring test on the drum. I bet a lot of guys don't know about that. So you really want to get into these. <laughs> be, be sure you really do. You know, I mean, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of learning curve and. I don't know, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to discourage you, but I want you to understand what you're getting into. This is not an easy slam it together unit and, you know, guys hand you stacks of cash. I mean, it's just not, you know, you work your butt off on it and you hope you come out ahead at the end. That's, that's the reality of these, you know, I, I enjoy doing them just, I guess, cause I'm a Ford guy, but, um, and I, spent a lot of time studying this unit and I have learned it and I know what I'm up against and so it's you know and I've got all kinds of equipment you know I've got you know lathes and mills and you know welders and I've got all the stuff and I've got the tools I've got the knowledge so I'm a different situation than probably a lot of shops that just want to put something together you know most shops are smarter than me. They do late model stuff that they get paid twice the money for and half the work. You know, then messing around with this old stuff, welding up drums and, you know, cutting everything for bearings and late model stuff, you don't have to do too much of that. Yeah, it's got its own headaches, but it doesn't have all the machine work involved. So anyways, uh, that's just a quick overview on the forward drum. There was a couple guys making new billet ones. That was nice, but I don't know that those can still be had. I know one of the sources dried up on them that we used to sell. Um, oh, you know, another thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you one more thing I want to talk about real quick is the thrust washer in this position. Because uh, a lot of guys put a bearing here. And... I'm gonna tell you, I still use a thrust washer here. You don't need it. The way I modify the forward planetary, and I'll show that in another video, but the way I modify the forward planetary, the only time this is doing anything is in reverse. And who cares about reverse? This is just not an issue. Um, you know, you don't need to do this. So, if you want to put a bearing here, great, knock yourself out, but you don't need it. Just not necessary. This really basically is just a spacer at this point. Um, again, but this is after the forward planetary is modified. I know a lot of you guys have seen these get chewed up on the inside from the planetary, but uh, I'm gonna, I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, and you'll need a lathe for that. Okay, uh, that's it on this one. I will uh, continue on as I have time. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more on this C4 or other transmissions or hot rods, uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, help keep it going and all that good thing. Uh, we don't make money on this channel. I don't think that we ever really will. I don't see that we'd have enough volume. There's not enough of us 
forward geeks doing this stuff to, you know, there's not millions of us, there's dozens of us, I think, so, uh, but anyways, uh, try to help us out, and, um, I mainly just do this to save myself, uh, phone and email time, so, it works out pretty good for that. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for watching.